Okay, good afternoon, friends. So, in last lecture, we have seen a brief introduction of this subject: electrical circuits. What do you mean by electrical circuits? What are the different elements of an electrical circuit? Then, all these elements they consist of active elements, passive elements, as well as some sources. So, sources we have seen. what are the classification of sources dependent sources independent sources types of these sources current source voltage source then source transformation if we want to transform the particular voltage source into current source or current source into voltage source then this transformation we have seen then in few cases if voltage source along with a resistance in series it it has to be given then only you can transform that voltage source to current source current source if you want to transform to voltage source then along with current source you need a resistance which is parallel to that particular current source but if these values of resistors are not known to you then in that cases you have to shift the sources so that is source shifting so that also we have seen source shifting and now we'll start our discussion with mesh analysis so till this it was a revision uh, which we have already learnt in uh, first year bwe and now we'll start the actual syllabus of your uh, electrical circuits on which the questions will be asked so first topic in that is the mesh analysis so i'll share my screen to you stop video and then share my screen yes is it visible to you yes sir ha ah, okay so in network analysis this is the circuit which uh, i'll mark my pointer so that you will be able to see that highlighter so this is a particular electrical circuit which is consisting of a voltage source here a current source here and few elements that is the resistances so these are the resistances so this forms a particular circuit so or a network in this network now there are few closed paths so this is one closed path you can call it as a loop or a mesh this is another closed path that is another loop or mesh this is another closed path which is a loop or a mesh so now in mesh analysis you have to form certain meshes and you have to assume the mesh currents so this mesh currents this is this is first mesh will assume that this is the first mesh current i1 this is second mesh current i2 this is third mesh current i3 now while assumption you can assume either clockwise direction currents or anti clockwise direction current but a usual practice is clockwise currents they are assumed in each of the loop or mesh so we have assumed this i1 in clock direction clockwise direction i2 in clockwise direction i3 also in clockwise direction in each of the meshes respectively now next is if you want to solve the problem of 
mesh analysis or loop analysis what are the steps involved in this so these are the steps for loop or mesh analysis first step is choose the various loop so you have to select various loops that is the first step then second step show the various loop currents and the polarities associated to voltage drops so here we have shown clockwise direction of currents i1 i2 i3 and so on for all the loops and the polarities associated voltage drops so voltage drops also you can show and then you have to apply kvl but before applying kvl you have to look for whether the particular cases are there in this whether it is having only independent voltage sources or in addition to that any current source is there if any current source is there then whether it is in common to either of two uh, any two loops or meshes then it will become a special case that is the super mesh or it may not be common current source may not be common to to any two of the networks so that means it is the second case so first case is if only voltage independent voltage sources are available in the network second case is in uh, along with voltage source current sources may be available so if you have to see whether any current source is common between any two meshes if it is not common then uh, that is it is outside the uh, loop of that particular mesh then it is the second case of numerical and third case of numerical is if there is any dependent source dependent voltage sources current dependent voltage source voltage dependent voltage source or maybe voltage dependent current source or maybe current dependent current source so this may be the case dependent sources may be present in the network so that is your third case and fourth case is your uh, super mesh that is any two meshes or loops they are containing the current source as common to these two right so these four sort of or types of numericals will see and they are included in the syllabus so now if any current source is there then what you have to do you have to analyze the branch consisting of current source independently and express the value of current source in terms of the assumed looped currents and you have to repeat it for all the current sources after that you have to apply kvl for these loops where current sources are not there okay only voltage sources or dependent sources are there for those loops you have to apply kvl then so you will write the equations in terms of currents equation in terms of voltage and then you will solve these equations to uh, which are obtained in step number 3 and step number 4 simultaneously to obtain the required unknowns that means you will be able to find the mesh currents i1 i2 i3 and so on so forth or any particular current is flowing in any particular branch right so after this let us move to a numerical purposely i have kept these numbers same as that of the book this is example 2.29 so the ravish singh book copy which i have given to you in that second chapter and problem number example number 2.29 also i have kept even the figure numbers which are mentioned that is also i have kept for your reference so that which problem we have solved that you will come to know and which problem still we have to solve that you will be uh, that will be clear to you yeah. so let us solve this numerical find the current through the 5 ohm resistor shown in this figure number 2.5 so this is 5 ohm resistance 
through which you have to find the current and we have to solve this numerical by mesh analysis so very first step is you will find out how many meshes are there so in all three meshes are there in this numerical so three mesh currents you will assume in clockwise direction so you have to assume this so first step is assuming clockwise mesh currents so here for mesh 1 i1 current i assume for mesh 2 i2 current i assume and for mesh 3 i3 current i assume so i have redrawn this circuit and shown the currents in that now what is second step i have to find whether any current source is there or not or which type of problem it is whether it is type 1 type 2 type 3 or type 4 problem so you will find that only voltage sources are there and resistances are there there is no current source so this is type 1 problem so type 1 problem how to solve it we have to apply kvl directly to loop 1 loop 2 and loop 3 now while writing the kvl what you need to find whether it is a rise in potential or fall in potential if rise in potential is there you will indicate it by a positive sign if fall in potential is there you will indicate it by a negative sign so you apply first kvl to first loop i'll uh, yes okay so for apply kvl to mesh 1 so what is this first is this is the direction of current let us say we'll start with this 10 volt battery current is flowing from negative end of battery to positive so it is a rise in potential so this 10 will be positive so plus 10 then drop across a resistor so there is a drop which is always across resistor it is having a negative sign so i'll indicate it by minus 1 so minus 1 over into current flowing through this is i1 so minus 1 i1 minus 3 into here in this 3 ohm resistor now two currents are flowing one is i1 flowing from top to down and i2 current flowing from down to top for this 3 ohm resistor so the current net current flowing through 3 ohm resistor as we are in loop 1 or mesh 1 i1 current will be the dominating current so we'll take i1 minus i2 will be the resultant current flowing through this 3 ohm resistor so it will be minus 3 into bracket i1 minus i2 what this then next is this resistance 6 ohm resistor 6 ohm resistor also carrying two currents one is i1 flowing from top to down and second current i3 which is flowing from bottom to top so again we are in mesh 1 so current i1 will be the dominating current so i1 minus i3 will be the current flowing through 6 ohm resistor so drop across that will be minus 6 into i1 minus i3 equal to 0 so this is the loop equation for mesh 1 now rearrange the terms club all the terms containing i1 so this 1 uh, minus 1 i1 this is minus 3 i1 then so on so forth you club all the terms of i1 club all the terms of i2 club all the terms of i3 and all constants on another side so this equation if you will simplify it will simplify to 10 i1 minus 3 i2 minus 6 i3 equal to 0 let us say this is equation number 1 so this equation number 1 we have found it out from applying kvl to loop 1 or mesh 1 now apply kvl to mesh 2 so this is your mesh 2 so apply kvl to this mesh you can start from any element let us start with this 3 ohm resistance now in this 3 ohm resistance again two currents are flowing 
one is i2 and another is i1 now we are writing equation of kvl equation of mesh 2 so current i2 is the dominating one so current flowing through net current flowing through this 3 ohm will be i2 minus i1 so 3 ohm into i2 minus i1 and as it is a resistance so minus 3 into i2 minus i1 will be drop across this resistance then drop across this it is minus 2 into only i2 current is flowing so minus 2 i2 then for this 5 ohm again only one current i2 is flowing so minus 5 i2 that is the next term and here here for this voltage source current is flowing from positive end of battery to negative end of battery so it is a fall in potential so it is again having a negative sign so it will be minus 5 equal to 0 again so this is the kvl equation for second mesh again add all the terms of i1 club all the terms of i1 club all the terms of i2 and club all the terms if i3 are there and all constant so that the resultant equation will become minus 3 i1 plus 10 i2 equal to minus 5 let us see this is equation number 2 now apply kvl to mesh number 3 so for this mesh the dominating current is i3 so if we we'll start from this 6 ohm resistance again two currents are flowing in this one is i3 from bottom to top and another is i1 from top to bottom again we are in third loop we are writing equation for third loop so dominating current will be i3 so it will be the net current flowing through 6 ohm resistor will be i3 minus i1 so the drop across this 6 ohm will become minus 6 i3 minus i1 then for this battery again current is flowing from negative terminal of battery to positive terminal that means it is a rise in potential so we mark it at a uh, with a plus sign so for plus 5 then again for this drop minus 4 into current only one current is flowing i3 so minus 4 i3 and for this battery the current is flowing from negative end of battery to positive end of battery so that means it is a rising potential so we will write it as a plus 20 equal to 0 so this is kvl equation for loop 3 again rearrange it by clubbing all the terms of i1 together clubbing all the terms of i2 together clubbing all the terms of i3 together and all the constants together and you will the resultant equation will become minus 6 i1 plus 10 i3 equal to 25 so let us say this is equation number 3 now you have got three equations three unknowns are there i1 i2 i3 three unknowns and three equations are there so you can solve them simultaneously by any means you can solve it by eliminating any variable so multiply any equation by a particular constant then add or subtract any two equations so that one variable will be cancelling so equation will be only of two variables you can solve it again with another equation you can multiply by some constant you can reduce that third variable also and only one variable will be there and a constant you can find the value of that variable with this type or you can use cramer's rule which you know for cramer's rule you can write matrix of i1 i2 i3 and constants so it will be if you want to find let us say variable i1 then it will be determinant of this i1 row will be replaced by the constants and then i2 and i3 coefficients will be there and divided by all the coefficients of i1 i2 and i3 
so this use of crammer's rule it is mentioned in your uh, rice sings book again you can solve this with the help of calculator also so i will show you how to use the calculator if uh, anybody is not knowing then i will show it i will uh, make my um, video on okay so this is a calculator you turn it on first so after turning on this calculator you will find there is a switch of more so more switch is there more so you press this more switch if you will press it once you will find this com and complex so 1 and 2 press it again once you will find sd reg and bse 1 2 and 3 press it once you will find eqn mat and vct 1 2 and 3 so we are interested to solve equations so if you want to solve equations you will press one so what we have did till now we have used this more switch we have pressed it thrice if you will press it thrice you will find on your screen of calculator eqm mat and vct will appear okay now as we want to solve equations press one so we we'll press here one so that we will ask them how many unknowns you want to solve how many e uh, equations or how many unknowns are there in the equations two or three so usually either you have to solve it for two unknowns or three unknowns so in this case there are three unknowns i1 i2 and i3 so we we'll press three now it will display a1 so a1 is displayed so what you have to write here is the coefficient of first equation i1 first co uh, coefficient of first variable you have to write so how much it is it is 10 so i will write enter 10 in this and then press equal so he will ask what is b1 b1 means what is the coefficient of second variable in first equation so in our case it is minus 3 so i will write here as minus 3 okay then again i press equal you will ask what is c1 c1 means what is the coefficient of third variable in equation number 1 so in this case it is minus 6 so i will write here minus 6 and then again press equal so we will ask what is d1 d1 is your constant so what is the constant that you have to uh, take care that all the constants you have to take on another side so that the signs will be of that side so here it is 10 so i enter 10 and again press equal so after pressing equal it will show now a2 a2 means for second equation what is the coefficient of first variable so in our case it is minus 3 so i have entered here minus 3 then again equal we have asked what is b2 what is b2 b2 is the coefficient of second variable in second equation so in our case it is 10 so i have written here 10 and again pressed equal so we have asked what is c2 c2 is the third variable uh, coefficient of third variable in second equation so in our case there is no i3 term so what i'll do i'll enter here zero so i have entered here zero and again press equal so what is b2 so b2 is the constant term in second equation in our case it is minus 5 i have entered here minus 5 again equal so you have asked me what is a3 a3 means now he has moved to third equation what are the coefficients of first variable second variable third variable and a constant term in third equation so i enter it quickly it is minus 6 again equal to then 
again equal to then 10 again equal to and 25 again equal to so if i press now equal to i'll get the answer of first variable and i am getting x equal to 4.2727 so that means my value of i1 he has directly given so value of i1 is 4.2727 again i will press equal to so he will give me y equal to that is the value of second variable y equal to or in our case it is i2 equal to 0.7818 so this is the value of i2 current again i will press equal so it will give me z equal to 5.0636 so that means he has given me the value of I3. So in this way, you will get the value of values of I1, I2, and I3. Now again, I will share the screen. Okay. Is it visible now? Screen again. Yes. Yes. So now our values of currents I1 and I I2 and I3, those values, those values are again I1 equal to 4.27, it is correct. I2 is 0.78, it is correct. I3 is 5.06. So these values of I1, I2, I3, I have found it correct. Now what is the question? In question, it was asked to find the current through, if you remember, what is the current flowing through 5 ohm resistor? We have asked. So what is the current flowing through 5 ohm resistor? It is nothing but your I2. So what is the value of I2? I2 is 0.78. So directly you will get this answer as 0.78. If you would have asked you what is the current flowing through 6 ohms or 3 ohms, then you have to subtract this I1 and I2 or I1 and I3 to get the value of that particular current. Got this first numerical? Now let us see the simulation of this. We want to show now simulation. So the same circuit you can simulate with the help of this. I'll share my second screen. Yes. So is it visible to you? Yes, sir. So, falstad.com slash circuit is this site in which we know that now we have already discussed it a number of times. So, we'll go in circuit, we'll use a blank circuit. So, once I'll select a blank circuit, there will be a blank screen appearing to the screen. Now, on this screen, we'll draw, start drawing the circuit. So what is our circuit? We want to draw few resistors. So add resistors here. I'll add one resistor. Okay. I don't want this. I'll add a resistor in this fashion. One. Then second. So these two resistors are there. One resistance in this direction one resistance in this direction, one resistance in this direction, one resistance in this direction. Okay, so these many resistances. Then what I want to draw, I want to draw voltage source. So sources are available in inputs and sources. So DC source, so add voltage source to terminal. So this, if you will move it from bottom to top, it will give me a voltage source like this, which is, I am interested in. 
and here one more i am interested in with this polarity and here i am interested in with this polarity right so i have uh, drawn all these components which i was needing then if you want to change the uh, magnitude of this you have to double click on that so here for voltage source you will get this window window will appear on which you can uh is it working no so you write here tem so that it will be tem volts battery then apply and then okay right similarly you can change the value of resistance here first resistance is your 1 ohm so you it is 1k instead of that i will write 1 ohm so apply and okay so in this manner you complete this again we want to see the currents so for observing the currents you will need output device as a ammeter so output labels you go add one ammeter so add ammeter you can add here ammeter in this direction or in opposite direction so in every loop you will add one ammeter right so this you can add and then you complete the circuit with the help of add wires right so i have already completed it now are you able to see this so this is the circuit then i have started its simulation so you will find that this i1 current flowing through is 4.273 ampere i2 current flowing through this mesh it is 781.8 milli ampere that is 0.78 ampere and i3 current it is flowing as 5.064 ampere so the values which we have got from this simulation are same as that of which we are observed in numerical is it correct all values are matching yes all values are matching or not i'll share it once again yes so here you will find yes this is the these are the values we have calculated manually and these are the values which we have got through simulation so i1 is 4.27 so exactly i have got 4.27 i2 is 0.78 i have got exactly 0.78 i3 is 5.06 i have got it exactly 5.06 so this is the simulation of this particular network is it clear to you now i hope yes. uh, uh, is time is going out so you rejoin the meeting i'll stop for some time i'll stop recording even